Right, hello again, Year 5. Um, this is Thursday's lesson now. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing your books brought back in tomorrow, and we're also really, really looking forward to marking your work and seeing some happy faces tomorrow from both classes as well when we're handed out the work. So, um, we looked at bullet points yesterday, so we're going to look at something slightly different. A lot of people, I think, will have really understood um, bullet points, so you won't need to look at that much longer. So, the um, first thing that we're going to look at are synonyms and antonyms. A synonym is a word which means the same as another word, so like um, happy and glad. And an antonym is a word which means the opposite of another word, so like happy and sad. So, uh, oh, when it wants to work, in your book, if you could draw something that looks like this using a ruler... Uh, can you list as many synonyms as you can for the word happy on this side, like this one says, and as many antonyms, opposites, for the word happy as well. So pause the video here, get along with that, and then we can move on. Uh, once we've finished that, so now that you're coming back to watch the video, you should have got a page that looks like this. So you're going to use thesaurus. You can go to thesaurus.com and just type the words in. Uh, not only will you find stuff like adjectives here on this one, you can also find synonyms there for the word as well. So, uh, you're going to be practicing, trying to use synonyms. Um, so, synonyms for tall. Uh, you might have something like, if I type it in very, very quickly. You might have something like massive for instance, and you could quickly find that. Obviously, if you already know a lot of the synonyms, you don't have to use the thesaurus or thesaurus.com. You can use the knowledge that you have in your brain, but obviously the other options are there for if you need them. So, now that you've done that, I want you to up-level this, so improve some of the words. So, it says, I heard a really exciting piece of news. So, you could up-level, uh, where's my pen? You could up-level something like exciting, really, heard, news, peace, all words that you could up-level. Uh, you could get, I'm expecting at least three different versions of that sentence to be wrote in your books for me to have a look through when you come to hand in your work uh, tomorrow. So, yeah, right. I'll waste no more time on the starter. You've had a lot of time on that, obviously. You've paused it, so you've been working hard. Uh, I want to get on to writing the next part of your um, magazine, your non-chronological report. We'll quickly recap what we're writing. Again, a non-chronological report or a magazine in this case is that type of non-chronological report, isn't it? So uh, the next one, we are writing this to inform, to give information to other classes and other people in the school and to really show off how good the writers are in year five. So, uh, just to think about from yesterday, I want you to have a think about the work that you've done. Uh, if I was you now, I would spend 10 minutes going through and blue penny making sure the writing that you did yesterday is as perfect as it can possibly be. Um, the only reason I say this is because I know sometimes some people leave all the blue pen until the end and it's a bit time consuming, which is unfortunate. So if you just spend 10 minutes now, pause the video, go through your book with a blue pen. It might not even take 10 minutes. Just go through, make sure all the spellings are correct. Use the internet or a dictionary you might have at home to help you. And just double check everything that you've wrote. So pause the video here, get on with that, and I will get on to our paragraph. Right, so all you need to do today is to... You should have decided when you were doing your plan which planet you were going to write about. Now, I told you uh, in the last few lessons that I chose Neptune, didn't I? So, uh, you might have chose something like, I don't know, Mars. You might have chose Uranus. You might have even chosen Pluto or Mercury or anything like that. But like I say, I chose Neptune. So, I wrote this paragraph. And again, even if you haven't chose Neptune, you can use this as a great base. You just swap out the facts that I've got about Neptune for the facts that you might have about whatever planet you've chosen. Obviously not Earth, because we wrote about that yesterday. But anyway, 
Sir, Neptune. Dark, cold, and whipped by supersonic winds. So there again, I've used, I, I did have fast there, but I used my thesaurus to up level fast and change it to supersonic, didn't I? Sir, ice giant Neptune is the eighth and most distant planet from our solar system. More than 30 times as far from the sun as Earth. Again, there using my formal and factual language. Neptune is the only planet in our solar system not visible to the naked eye. So that means if I was to look up in the air, uh, in the night sky, I would be able to see at different points any other planet, even Uranus, even Jupiter, even Saturn. But Neptune is the only one that I wouldn't be able to see. Anyway. A day on Neptune lasts only 11.6 hours. However, the short days are completely different to the extremely long years on Neptune, which last 164 Earth years. Neptune's atmosphere gives it a blue colour, which, uh, which is fitting with it being named after the Roman god of the sea, obviously the sea being blue. Its atmosphere is made of hydrogen. Helium and methane, so they're just different gases. These are stuff that I've researched and I've found. I've made a bullet point list of when I was doing the research for the planning lesson, and now I've found it on here. I've wrote it in. That's what I'm, that sort of thing I do. I'd look back at my plan, and then I write like that. The methane gives Nep Neptune the same blue colour as Uranus, like I said. Neptune has six very hard-to-see rings. So if I just underline that very quickly here in red, I've used a subordinate clause we've been looking at. I've added information in between a sentence, haven't I? Unlike the Earth, or you might even say that's parenthesis as well, sorry. Unlike the Earth, which only has one moon, Neptune has 14. And then I've used another bit of parentheses here, haven't I? To use brackets and put the largest one is called Triton. Neptune has a colossal storm. I did have big. I've used a thesaurus. I've found a synonym. I've up-leveled it, which has been raging on the planet for many years. It is commonly known as the Great Dark Spot. So you can't see it on that this diagram, but it's about here. And it is the same size as Earth. So a storm on Neptune that's been raging for years, one storm of rain and high-speed winds, was the size of our entire planet. And it also has a second, small, called, uh, a second storm, which is only slightly smaller, called the Small Dark Spot. And that storm's around the same size as the Moon. So we have Earth and a moon. Neptune has storms that are the same size as those two on its planet, which is just insane, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, off you go. Start writing your paragraph about the planet that you've chosen. Again, it didn't have to be Neptune. It could have been whatever you wanted it to be. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing them tomorrow. If you do need any help from myself or Miss Biggs, we're only ever an email away, and we can call you if need be as well. Um, the last thing I will do, say about this, is once you've done, please blue pen it. Take your time with this, like I said yesterday. If that means putting some relaxing music on to really help you concentrate, there's a lot of information. I know it's difficult. I know it's really high-level stuff. So feel free to put music on. Please, please, please get in touch if you do need any help, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I hope you're all looking after yourself, and I will see you soon. So goodbye and take care.